we've uh, um, posted this in three places. I see our, um, we need a new school project for the, yes. the board outside there. That looks like the wind took its, yeah. some, yeah. took that out. And on the website, we posted it and emailed to interested parties so we can move forward uh, legally with this meeting. <clears throat> the prior meeting minutes of February 28th, I wasn't here. Is Pat here with Zooming? Yep, she is. So you two can approve those if you if you so desire. I saw one, I believe, minor correction to the paragraph that starts with West Hill Bridge. I think it's the eastern uh, lot, not Easter lot. <laughs> Thank you. <Easter. laughs> Other than that, I've read them and I approve them. I second that. Okay, all in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Um, got those. We have Tony Page as a guest, but he's not. Is he on Zoom? No. No. Nope. Okay. All right. We'll see. Um, maybe he'll throw show up later. So on the new business, the first item we have is the consideration and possible approval of a necessity resolution for refinancing the Randolph National Bank fire station promissory note. Um, do you want to give a little background on? Um, Jeff Gephardt has something to say. Yeah. Okay. It's an addition to the oh to the agenda. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was hoping that we could uh, take a moment and hear from Tim Patterson from Sun Common. He has taken a look at the what might be involved to um, utilize battery storage for emergency backup um, functions at the. Uh, the uh, town office. Um, yeah, yeah, he's uh, he he's present like, on on Zoom there. He I, Tim is present and accounted for. All right. <laughs> well, and I did we... I did send all of the. Uh, there are three estimates. Um, I sent uh, Tim's uh, email and the three estimates that he's provided for us. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it should be in your email. I printed them. There should be a pair. Yep. All right. Well, um, since he's um, here and doesn't need to hear the whole rest of the meeting, why don't we let you guys take the floor? Great. Thank you. Really appreciate the opportunity to join you. Um, as Jeffrey said, I'm Tim Patterson. I'm from Craftsbury, Vermont, um, and uh, work at SunCommon, um, consulting on solar and energy storage projects. Um, I won't take too much of your time. Um, I thought I'd just do a quick overview of what battery and solar um, could bring to the town office in terms of resilience and savings. Um, and then I'd be happy to, to field questions. Um, the gist is that I understand like many Vermont municipalities that you have um, some funding available for backup power. Um, and uh, oftentimes, um, you know, that means a, a generator. Um, batteries are getting to the point where they are um, competitive with a generator, um, different in, in some ways, um, and can work as a standalone alternative to a generator or in combination um, with, with a generator. Um, basic advantage of batteries is that they go on automatically when the power goes out. It's instantaneous. You know, sometimes you might notice the lights flicker just a tiny bit, um, but otherwise it's a seamless transition. Um, there's no sound. Um, there's no emissions, um, and uh, they just kind of sit next to the breaker box doing their thing. Um, the advantage to a generator, of course, is that as long as it has fuel, it can run forever, whereas batteries will get drained down over time. Um, if you do have solar on site, in addition to batteries, then those batteries can recharge directly from the solar panels. Um, you've got a nice south-facing lot, good south-facing standing seam roof. Um, it seems that there could be solar on the roof. I say good. I see the. <laughs> maybe it might need some work. There, um, um, yeah, there's also we, the we had that. We've done projects with carports. Yeah, we had this. Sorry, this somebody roof actually. Yeah, we had this roof structure analyzed for that very purpose, and it was deemed unsuitable, not not strong enough to uh, without significant. Um, Re reworking of it to um, to hold that because we had that thought about solar on this roof because it is facing south with no obstruction but 
but um, anyway, go on. That's the um, the potential of the resiliency zone that Green Mountain Power has been contemplating um, with a solar field um, relatively close to the downtown area would probably be the you know the, the source of any kind of um, input to the battery bank. I would think versus trying to put something on the roof That's here. That's terrific. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's certainly helpful to know about the roof structure. You know, sometimes Google Maps doesn't tell you everything. <laughs> no. But uh, if those solar panels from the Green Mountain Power Resiliency Zone are close enough to be able to provide that back up to the town office, then that really is advantageous for the prospect of uh, battery backup um, because there'd be those panels able to just recharge the batteries directly in the event of a you know, longer term grid outage. Um, cost wise, you know, I sent over some initial estimates, um, and there are some incentives available. Um, but, um, you know, I know you have a stacked agenda tonight, um, and, uh, I want to be respectful of your time so I can just kind of pause there and, uh, field questions or, um, present a little bit further if, uh, if you'd like me to do so. So those estimates with the first one, was that including, um, roof, um, roof panels? I sent over three, um, all have three batteries. Um, we install the power wall batteries um, and three of those it seemed would be enough to provide at least 24 hours of backup without any recharging from the solar. Mm -hmm. So the first estimates, just if we come in and do that with no incentives, it's about $26,000 for those batteries. If we do that and also access incentives, um, tax credits, um, which may be available for municipalities, um, depending on what legislation looks like later this year, um, and GMP, Green Mountain Power Incentives, um, that takes that price all the way down less than $10,000 for the same three batteries. Then if we were to add solar, you know, roof mount might not be an option. That's the one that I plugged in. Um, then you start to see, you know, savings on the electric bill moving forward. Um, and really the best option in terms of cash flow is if you spread out the cost of the project over time and then let it pay itself back from the savings on the electric bill. Um, you know, that's if the, if the solar is part of the picture as well. Mm -hmm. How long um, batteries good for? Yeah. How long do the batteries um, last? Not for charge, but how many years yep. of life do they have in them? 20 years. 20 years? Uh, well, the warranty is 10. Yep. So any calculation, I would say probably stick to that warranty period um, just to be safe. They could let well last longer. Just 10. 10 years is, um, is the warranty. The warranty is 10 years. Yeah. What kind of batteries are they? They're, uh, we install Tesla Powerwall batteries. Um, so the same sort of battery pack that you would find in, uh, <laughs> in a Tesla car. Well, I wouldn't know about that. Are they, are they lithium? Or... They are, yep. Yeah, okay. Lithium ion. Yep. How much yep. does the battery cost? They're, they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Three or 24,000. For 10 years? Well, yeah. it's just the batteries, but oh, it's just three batteries. But... I guess we just take it under advisement. And yeah. I, 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 does anyone else have any questions out in the, in the Zoom land? Yeah. Yeah. We've looked at it. Well, um, I appreciate you coming and, and, and bringing this information to us between the investigation we've been doing for a, a standard, um, you know, fossil fuel backup generator, and then the Green Mountain Power talking about uh, creating a resiliency zone for the downtown area, and and this information, there's a lot lot floating around about, um, you know, a backup power the, the most recent experience I've had with it here was during Irene when I don't know who dragged their generator out of the garage and stuck it in the parking lot, but it, it, it did the, it was very helpful to have that. Um, so um, this is our emergency um, management center. So it's, it's definitely um, brought up the topic of, of having a, you know, backup, backup power here in terms of the pricing. I know that the town has, you know, requested that um, we consider environmental concerns with all of our decisions. Um, the 
it looks like the the most current quote we have from Brookfield Services after the rebates and the, the grant money that we have set aside was going to cost us under a couple thousand dollars to get a fossil fuel set up, um, which is money always seems to take a, a play in, in things. Um, I would think that even if we did get this um, go with the fossil fuel set up, that doesn't preclude in the future still expanding into um, a, a battery system in addition to that if the, the um, incentives come forth and it's easily done. So so having this information is, is, is helpful and we appreciate it. Great. Thank you for your time and yeah. interest. Yeah. And Jeff, thank you for pursuing this and then keeping us on, you know, looking forward. Appreciate really your, your energy efforts. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you. Tim did point out too that the uh, the batteries in conjunction with the generator could also um, be a feasible way of doing this if the first line of defense was the battery. And then if that was exhausted, we could yeah. then go off of the generator. But I think that that yeah. does have an impact on one of the incentives um, that the, uh, the batteries have to be um, solar generated for the Green Mountain Power one, I believe. That's correct, Tim. Yeah. yeah, the, the other thing... The other thing about uh, the, the uh, town office, we do have a service disconnect in the corner of the building right now. Um, and we have underground um, wiring from that to the current solar array um, that's not functioning in the parking area. So it is potential, there could potentially be a hookup um, to that conduit or say a, a carport kind of uh, rack. Um, that mm -hmm. could have a southern face and, and people could park underneath. Um, but that's that's just another thought with, with respect to this. We could yeah. not get from GMP yet a range as to how long the resiliency zone will cover the village. And that's obviously going to be a range because it's uh, load dependent. Um, right. So without that, it makes this analysis a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, if we, if we had a, a fairly long um, buffer with the resiliency zone, then this could work quite well. Um, but just just bringing those to the fore and, and uh, yep. we'll continue to think about it. Great. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Thanks, Tim. We really, yeah, appreciate you taking the time to... Um, sit at your desk and sign into Zoom. A lot easier than <laughs> driving to Rochester. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time and interest. And uh, yeah. Martha, I wish you a swift recovery. Um, yeah, take care. Good evening. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, Julie, you want to give us a little background around this um, refinancing the fire station? Note? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I was looking into the fire station loan it's currently 3.95 and through um, our bank, Mascoma, the town uses, uh, we can get it for 2.6. We have about 168,000 left on the loan. It's 11 years. So um, going with the lower rate would save the town about a little over 14,000. That's worth signing some papers to do, I think. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The term yeah. on the new... Oh. Yeah, it's could still... you repeat it? So the current, currently there's 11 years. It's about 168,000, a little over, um, and it's 3.95. If we go with Mascoma, who has offered 2.6, um, the loan still at 11 year term would save us about a little over 14,000. Okay, so you're, you're getting an 11 term. Okay. Is it's there the, anything involved in an appraisal or anything like that going on? Do, or is it just a quick flip? Just a quick flip. Uh, well, Excuse me. Julie, could, oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
Julie, could you please repeat, if you switch to, to Muscoma also for 11 years, it would save a little over, how much was the total? 14,000. 14,000 at what, um, by going to uh, what percent? 2.6. 2. Thank you very much, sorry. For some reason, I just didn't hear that. I apologize. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. I can't see any reason not to do that. I can't see any reason not to do it either. No, no I, I, it's kind of a no brainer. Yeah, it is right. kind of a no. thanks for thinking of that. So we basically, we need to execute a, a re resolution for refinancing. Yes. Uh, Jim. Yep. Yeah. Jim. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, I would uh, move to approve that resolution. I second that. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. I think I need to aye. identify myself as Pat Harvey saying aye because I'm on Zoom. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Good work, Julie. Yeah. Good yeah. work. Yeah. Appreciate it, Jules. Yeah, mm -hmm. that might offset some of the increased fuel costs in my it experience. Got my right yeah. <laughs> yeah, we um, I guess that came in just after the budget season. Huh? Yeah. We may not get any paving done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see. Let's hope so. <laughs> Pretty rough riding down the road. Yeah. <laughs> when it was at fifty nine cents. Yeah, I know. I mean, the roads they're still going to do it. So they say. They've only had to think about it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. This is 3, 14, 22. Oh, my neck is All right. So, um, so that's the um, promissory note that I just signed right there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the proposal yeah. from uh, yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So we have from, uh, I'll wait that until we talk with her. Where is, we have a grant agreement resolution for the Rochester High School repurposing study. We needed to sign some paperwork around accessing that grant money, I believe. Maybe it's on any. Oh, that's it, okay. There we go, too much to sign here. Sorry. So the, um, did we already approve this? Is this another approval of the, the that's Joan would know. Um, this is this is about the um, high school repurposing. I thought we'd already done that. I thought we'd already done that, but this is more. Um, there's more paperwork around it. it bear, therefore, being it resolved that the select legislative body of this municipality accepts it and agrees to the terms and conditions of said grant agreement, and that we're. Who are we? Um, designating as the person with overall administrative responsibility for the activities in the grant agreement. This is actually the um, under the auspice of the, the committee that's investigating this, correct? Is this the 60,000? Yeah, the 50. I thought, we had I thought we'd done that too. Yeah. I think Victoria said that it was is this recent? On the dates? February 28th. Yep. Here's the grant agreement and PM1 that needs to be formally accepted and signed by the select board at their next meeting. So this is just um, basically more, and this is from Tori. So yeah, it's the paperwork involved with the grants and that's why we have two rivers to help navigate all this stuff. So I would move to formally um, accept these, this grant agreement. I second that. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pat Harvey yeah. says. Yep, and I see that you, um, okay. So. No, no. Okay. All right. All right. Um, We have a um, liquor license here from, is this from the, 
From the uh, uh, Max Market. Okay, Max this Mark. is separate than the golf golf course dining. So we have an application from Max Valley Market for a second class liquor license. I'd move to approve that. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. As I. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we also have here um, topic of golf course dining. That was, that was, I think, what Tony Page wanted to talk about, and he had called me about that, and he is looking into re-energizing the restaurant at the golf course, um, and he's working through the paperwork to do that. That's nothing that this board has a say over other than approving or disapproving a liquor license, but we do not have an application for that yet. I don't think he's at that point. So okay. um, something fun is happening on Zoom, it looks like. Oh, he's, Pat's got a new puppy. All right. <laughs> um, June? Yeah, June? June? Yeah. Would it be okay to say that you, that you said that Tony Page is looking into re-energizing the restaurant at the golf course, or should I just not mention it all since Tony's not here tonight? Oh, yeah. um, I would. He, mention, uh, yeah. I, I don't. I don't know if you need to mention yet. I'd wait and let him present that. Okay. All right. I will. I won't say it. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Just wanted yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All right. Um, Joan. Um, what have you got for us? I see. See, we have a certificate. Certification of com compliance for town road and bridge standards and network inventory that is um and this time we do meet the um minimum requirements so this is um okay we do have an up-to-date highway network inventory which identifies location size deficiencies condition of roads bridges causeways culverts and highway related retaining walls on class one two and three town highways all right um, do you have anything to to um, add to that? Uh, no, this is the certificate that you know we sign every year uh, about yeah. the time of year, um, along with updating um, various town officials and their contact yeah. information. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned in my email to you, the um, the budget that we give the financial plan is what they call it uh, is something that we'll do after the budget. It has been approved at town meeting, and then I can yeah. use that. And I, uh, the folks at VTrans say they do want plan to have an annual meeting with us. Um, I don't think they've done it for the past two years, um, or if they did, I don't remember it. Um, and I'm not sure if they'll actually make it this year. Um, I guess it's not a requirement, but it's something that's always nice to have if people have the time for it. Um, yeah. It won't, it won't, uh, if it doesn't happen for a while, it won't prevent us from going ahead with applications in the middle of April. So uh, we're, we're all set with that. All right, all right. Uh, so this doesn't really need a, um, um, a motion. This is basically just us signing it to certify that we, um, we've reviewed it and, and agree with it. Is that right. correct? Yes, yeah. right, and okay. I have to return yeah. those to VTrans. Yep, yep. You there. And what else have you got to share with us tonight, Joan? Uh, not much. Um, when uh, the, the generator, that fossil fuel thing, uh, comes up uh, later in the agenda, um, we can talk about that, but that's uh, mostly Frank leading that discussion. Otherwise, I really don't have anything else I need to report. All right. All right. And um, we don't have anyone on Zoom representing the library tonight, do we? No. Nope. And um, nobody from the highway. Terry, you got anything on the utilities front that you want to talk about? Nope. Nope. Steady as she goes. Um, Jeff? Yeah. Might be changing pumping outfits. Oh, yeah? I'm looking at saving close to $700 pumping. 
I guess we can wait for a phone call back. Yeah, then. cool. But looks like it's going to be changing, probably. Should save a little money. Yeah. So. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. We're having a money saving Come competition going here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, right? <laughs> Start digging. Right. Cool. Thank you. Um, Jeff, did you have anything more that you wanted to talk about um, beyond our little earlier presentation? Um, not much, but yes, I uh, was contacted by a woman who has a um, business up in Waitsfield, and she is interested in purchasing the old firehouse to roast coffee beans in and then ship back up to Waitsfield. So. Yep, I think I talked to that guy. I, um, yeah, I don't think we're putting that up for sale right now, but that's... Um, yeah, there's a few people have their eye on that place, but it's it's so proved great. to be kind of kind of um, convenient for the town to still hold on to that. So, but um, just passing it on. Yep. No. No. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, so, did you want to um, talk more, Frank, about the generator and under? I think that we we've, we've kind of made up our mind on that. As far as. Um, awarding the grant to uh, Brookfield Services. Mm -hmm. um, we're still going to have to pony up some money because of the conditions of the way the everything's working now. They give you a price for so much. And, you know, we had it a year ago that when we got these yeah. initial bids and that's what the grant was figured on and all the bids came in over that. But we're pretty close uh, to... Uh, awarding that to uh, Brookfield Services for $12,346. Um, and we'll have to pony up the rest. It's, it's what, like $1,600? 16, 16, $1,646, yeah. so and that roughly. includes the installation the and, the, yeah. and the gas and yeah. all that. So um, I, I, that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, you and Pat maybe have other you know, ambitions, but that's the way I think we should go. That's yeah, what that I'm recommending. Like the most reasonable. Some of the other quotes were pretty, um, pretty um, out there. They were steep. Yeah, yeah. very steep. Um, and I, oh, the generator. For the town, it was a generator for the town office. That's what you said, right? Right. That's right. Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I had it correct. I'm sorry. Excuse me. And I, um, I think it's important that we. Note that this doesn't preclude um, future possibility of batteries, or, or then to the extent to which, if this resiliency zone does come to be, that that will be our first line of backup. But to um, I, I think it's wise to to cover all the bases here and go with this. Thing. And and plus, I think down the road, we're looking, we're going to have to make some serious decisions on our building here anyway, as far as whether we want to energy efficient this place mm -hmm. or, or do some work. It needs some attention yeah. as far as its condition it goes. So I think for any permanent fixes, I think is it needs to address the whole thing and not just piece it out. Yeah. So... I, I think it's the right move to make at this time for the community. So I support it. So that's the way I look at it. <clears throat> so we don't have that specifically listed under old business as um, awarding that grant, but um, I think that it's pretty clear. I mean, we've had it on the agenda in past meetings and I said that we were going to evaluate the bids and make the decision. So I don't I don't think it's unreasonable to go ahead and make that award that grant now if we're gonna bend the rules a little bit. What do you think is going if you wait much longer? Yeah, the way the prices right. are just gonna go up. So well, as it is, we're on a 30 day notice for that anyway, and, yeah. and we're we're crowding it so. So I, I yeah, think. actually, that that bid was good for thirty days, and I uh, counted it out, and uh, thirty days was as of yesterday. So, so hopefully, so we can I, get I, back I, to them. I, we, we can get back to them really, you know, in the next couple of days. Hopefully, yeah, they yeah. will not, not hold us to that. Pat, you got some input? 
Uh, yeah, my husband was uh, a sub for one of the bidders, so I'm going to recuse myself from the decision. Okay, all right. Well, I'd um, move to award the bid to Brookfield Service and notify them um, as soon as possible. So we're still in that hopefully 30 day window. I second that. Yeah. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Um, Duna Frank, um, what we need to do next is is to sign that one document, um, you know, where they broke out everything, that letter they sent along with the rest of the bid package. And it has yeah. to be with a deposit of $3,000. It's probably not. Is it in there? Um, yeah, okay. we'll, well, we, we'll be sure to get that yeah, we'll get signed today. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then if All you right. could, right. Frank, will you contact Brookfield or do you want me to do it? Uh, why don't you take that? Okay. Then I'll just need to. So, so you'll um, mark off the those extra items that you decided you want to include in the. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that on the on the original. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Um. <clears throat> um, I'd like to just say one thing. I did have a phone conversation with uh, Chris Bump, mm -hmm. and I asked about the paving for the summer, if they're even going to consider it due to the high fuel prices. And he said it's all still a go. I would think so. Yeah. And they're, they're planning on starting in the first around the 1st of April or along that line, depending on the weather. <clears throat> and they plan on doing the culvert starting in Stockbridge, moving to uh, hopefully get to the village by June 1st. Mm -hmm. And so that's when they'll be tearing up the village as far as the under drains and all that. Um, so we're also gonna meet with them in April at some point, it'll be the paving engineer and Chris Bump to go over the village. And I'd like Terry to be there to, you know, talk about the all the risers he has to deal with. And we can discuss on how the paving's going to come out or whether the town is going to be liable for any of that to even out things mm -hmm. in the in the yards and spread the paving out a yeah. little further depth in front of the church and from the skip mark down through to the hardware and along the Max way in the in the cafe and down through to your place mm -hmm. and front of the old firehouse and down by the park house and all that to see how that's all going to work and yeah. if the town's going to have any responsibility there so we'll have to keep that in mind okay. yes yeah. so but that's all still a go and I also requested a uh, a notice to uh, two rivers that they're going to do a uh, traffic study on Bethel Mountain Roads in with the idea of lowering the speed limit down to 40 to coincide with Bethel uh, just to make it even all the way through and hopefully we'll deter some of the truck traffic that goes over there when they look at their GPS and see that it's changed to 40 it'll add time to it mm -hmm. so maybe they'll look <clears throat> for a different way to go. So all right. Um, any other um, old business that's we get the firehouse we got our air air compressor yeah last week or two weeks ago set up so <coughs> it's a uh, pretty impressive tuning mm -hmm. yeah. to say the least yeah I mean we had a we, guy came up to teach us how to run it. And he was there for two and a half hours. Wow, cool. Have you got it all figured out? Yeah, it's not that bad. No. Yeah. It's no. actually easier than another one. Yeah. And it's safer. Yeah, yeah, safer. It's been a lot safer. How That's... long does it take, take to fill up the tank? Uh, he's recommending not ours are 22 16, the pressure in them. Mm -hmm. And he's saying we shouldn't fill it at a rate of 600 PSI per minute. So about three, four minutes yeah. for uh -huh. one tank, but we can fill three at a time. Oh, well. Yeah. But he said if you're at a fire call, you aren't going to 
you know, you're going to fill them a lot faster. What yeah. happens when they fill them faster, it stresses the air bottles. Mm -hmm. But also, when they cool back down, you lose. They'll only be like three quarters full, not oh, full. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Because it expands so much yep. and then it cools yep. back down. So, it, he was very, very good. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Well, congratulations. That took a while to get that, but you did it. You want to go a lot cheaper than 70,000. Yeah. You won't say anything about that. Oh. I think under that price, we don't really need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in okay. Facebook. Yeah. But we do have some, um, yeah, we could talk about. We got, um, and is this guy he's insured enough that we can hire him? Signed up. He has an um, now. I have to check on the workers, but he has the others. Yeah. Okay. No, it's um, we're um, got a couple quotes for some glass cleaning on some of the town buildings. One of spotless glass, and the other one Brian's Home Services. So we're um, not not big chunks of money, but um, yeah, it's um, a little spring cleaning. Oh. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure who we're going to give it to yet. You still have to check insurance and stuff. So that's um, not big dollars, not a big deal. The other thing, we're doing Easter this year. Oh, Easter is happening this year. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Pancake breakfast. Pancake kind of breakfast. Happens. Good. There will not be a bunny. Not be a bunny? Yeah, there is. No. Nope. Um, Terry? Um, if Terry, if you could email me or call me and give me the general info about that Easter breakfast, I can put a little something in the paper if you'd like. Yep, Kevin will get it to you, Martha. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, awesome. Well, I think that um, unless we have any other comments from the public out there, that's, um, that's it. Dog licenses. Dog licenses. Yeah, dog licenses are due April 1st. April 1st. And we will be at a clinic on March 23rd at the Hancock Fire Department from 5 to 7, and we'll be there to license. Okay. All right. Um, then I guess we'll end this meeting by going to the dogs. We got the dog on the Zoom. We got the dog license <laughs> notification. <laughs> I got a smile from Pat and everybody in Zoom works all right. like they're all set too. So okay. Thank you all. Thanks. Take so, care. Yeah. We'll be here next week. Have a good We're evening, everybody, meeting. and thank you for any questions. Pre-town meeting next week. Yeah, and then a pre-town meeting here um next week. Just next week. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Night guys.